And I'm delighted to say that Graham Clark, founding member and bassist for Wet Wet Wet, is sitting just across from me here in the studio. And really, genuinely great to see you. Um, new singer four or five years back, new album out now. But I have to ask you, what have you been up to in the interim? That's a good question. Um, you know, we, we've been kind of winding down, basically, you know, and, uh, you know, there was other things happening for other people that were in the band at the time. And, um, you know, when the, when the singer stepped out five years ago, we decided that we wanted to continue, you know. So it was a chance for us to get back on the train again and, and, and sort of start the band up. So, yeah, we, we had to look for an elusive singer. Yeah. And, uh, well, you've you know, got we, one, and we're coming. I mean, a, a, a young lad um, who's got a, his own background in, in, in popular music as well, who looks after the social media side. But <laughs> come to here in a moment. Come to him in a moment. As I said, if you've got it, you never lose it. I love that track. I'm sitting here quietly and, and listening to it. It captures a sort of music that I have enjoyed. But I tell you this: when we knew that you were coming on the program, um, the interest level was across the generations. That says something about a band. It's nice to hear that. You know, it's you know when you start out, you you never really know what's going to happen, where you're going to go, how's it going to, how are people going to receive you. But you know, we've been lucky enough. You know, we we started out. We left school. It was Margaret Thatcher's time, so th there was no shipyards building ships any longer. So we started our band and started on this uh, journey and. Yeah, I mean, nobody, you know, if, if you told me then I'd be talking to yourself yeah. on a sofa about our journey of 30 yeah. odd years, I would, have, I would have bit your hand off for a start, you know, sure. and I'd have been happy to do that. Um, so, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's great that we've been able to, you know, we went out there and obviously when we were young, we encouraged young mm. people to enjoy the music and they've grown up with us. And so we've yeah. brought this audience along. We've got a few more different bits of the audience that have came on board and, and some have left as well, you know, as, as as you do. But we're lucky enough that, you know, we we found a new singer and we found a reason to keep, yeah. keep the band going. Did you know that Arlene Foster, the former First Minister of Northern Ireland, who works here as well, yeah. is a fan? <laughs> she was doing a little jig this morning off the programme. I, she may have stayed around, I don't know. No, but that, I, it is I, quite an achievement. I'm in a huge Rolling Stones fan, and we talked about it yesterday because of the stamps that they've had uh, recently produced. And if you go to a Stones concert, you will see people of my age yeah. taking their... Kids who are in their 30s or 40s who maybe take their kids as well. Good music is across the generations. You quite hope so. And I, I think that was something that's been synonymous with Way It Wet is that, you know, we try and, you know, we always set the bar high. I think even in the early days, it was always striving to, to write a better song. Mm. And really, I, I, I absolutely enjoy that, uh, you know, the challenge of writing something that's going to connect with people and, you know, I know, I know lots of songwriters say that sort of thing, but it is, and, you know, it doesn't get any easier because, you know, when you, you know, I, I, I must admit, when we were writing this album, we, you know, we were in lockdown, so we weren't together. You, you know, musicians are a hardy bunch, you know, you, 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 you play with the hands that you're dealt, and yeah. of course we were dealt that hand that you couldn't be in a place together. Mm. So we had to find new ways of, Inventing the wheel, you know, and, and, and as I said, it doesn't get any easier writing a song. A song mm. is a difficult puzzle to work out. But while you were saying that, we were, there was a little bit, people watch, watch this on telly, which is great, but they also listen on radio. So just to explain that there were some lovely clips there uh, of recent concerts, um, uh, and not least also showing Kevin Sim there with the microphone. Absolutely. But you still on the most beautiful uh, bass there. Uh, you were telling me during the break, before we began this conversation, that, that festivals, not necessarily the great big, you know, Twickenhams and what have you, but just that series of festivals across the country have been a, a, a godsend, not only for you, but for many bands. Well, I think that's right. Um, you know, I, I think it's safe to say because of the uncertainty over the last two years with what we've had to endure, you know, I think people are much happier to go outside, say, than, than to go inside a venue, you know, yeah. and so... It's simply safer. Well, it's safer. It's also, 
it's another communal experience, you know, and, and, and that's the music is a, a unifying experience as well, I feel, you know, it's it's something that, uh, you know, I get into music because I love music, mm. you know, I had no idea that it could unify and bring people together, you know, the way that it has throughout my life. Yeah. And, and so that that's an amazing thing, you know, to do the festivals. You know, nobody knew what was going to happen last year. You know, some people were going out on the road, some people weren't, some tours have been cancelled, but the festival seemed to be the mainstay of, you know, how to get, you know, how to go out and play. And to be honest, it was quite emotional as well, you know, having been told you can't go out and play, to being able to go out into a festival, you know, music has that kind of powerful emotive thing inside it that it moves people. And, you know, I'm no different, you yeah. know, so... We were all on stage just about crying our yeah. eyes out, man, when we were playing the music, you know, because yeah. it just it hits your emotions in ways that you're unexpected, you know, and that's the beauty of music. Well, that, that, we, should, we should well with the touring and with the album. Now, pick that up yeah. and hold it, just, just hold it steady there in front of you. And, and, and there, can the camera pick that up? There we have it. Uh, now, that, that is what younger viewers and listeners need to have explained to them is what we call a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> and and I can remember uh, buying cassettes in the early days, and 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 vinyl is now facing a a renaissance, and of course DVD is there, but so many people stream. Does it matter to you as an artist? You are, I mean, first and foremost, you are a great bass player. Does it matter to you what format it goes out on? Not not really. I mean, I, I, formats are, are, are formats. It's lovely to have the nostalgia of, of a vinyl, you know, yeah. but this has been a first piece of vinyl for, for 20 odd years, yeah. maybe. So it was nice to, you know, and it's a nice process to take it out of the sleeve, to put it on, to, the thing, to clean it, to, to let the needle hit the, the vinyl. It's fantastic. But I mean, we sold, it was surprising to me, but we sold more cassettes back in the day because... If you think about it, people had cassette players in their cars. And yeah. so if the mums and dads, yeah. and this goes back to your well, generational thing, you know. Graham, we wish you well with the new album and with the tour. And Great. thanks for coming in and uh, sharing sure. dreams and reflecting on memories too. Graham Great. Clark, wet, 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 all of you, the best of luck. Good to see you. Thank thanks you so much. Thanks very much, much. Alistair. Thank you.